My name's uh, Mohammed Amin. I was born in Dublin. Uh, I was an only child. My father left shortly after I was born. I've never actually seen him. My mother wasn't practicing at all. I mean, she never discounted anything in a sense, but she never expressed anything of a religious nature. Uh, went to secondary school in Dublin and then ended up going to college in uh, the middle of Ireland, in Athlone, known as, known as the heart of Ireland, and studied graphic design there. Uh, and then when I came back to Dublin, um, I just fancied broadening my horizons a bit, so I ended up uh, travelling to Edinburgh, where my friend was. And I did that when I was about 21. And uh, I'd say in Ireland, the religious atmosphere was getting, and has been for a while, was quite ambivalent to the church as an institution and Catholicism as a tradition. Because of the way, the state the church was in, in the last two decades, um, it was losing its kind of credibility. So I grew up with um, a sense, like I was always artistic, always writing and things like this, so in a sense, I didn't regard myself as being spiritual, but I, was, I liked words and I liked meanings behind words. But I grow, grew up with a kind of cynical attitude to um, politics and current affairs and things like this. I had no real exposure to Islam, or although there was a couple of mosques in Dublin. As a child, I lived just up the road from them, um, but I didn't know anything about them while I was growing up. And my first kind of exposure to Islam would have been 9-11, really. And on that day, I was working in a school, in a primary school. And I basically walked in and the other workers were saying, have you seen what's happened? And we brought all the children up to a room, to a television screen, to show them what was happening. I just knew that I had to keep watching because something was going to come from this. And I'd seen the kind of controversies around the NATO bombing in, in, um, in um, Serbia. So when it came to the invasion of Iraq, then ju things just seemed really, like, revelatory. I had looked at the Book of Revelations and stuff like this, and all this war talk and symbology and religious rhetoric was something as a as a then practicing performance poet I wanted to respond to and um, so I was I was getting disillusioned basically with the Christian community I didn't see any kind of a, a response affirmative kind of action it was just dismissive it was just that's not Christian rhetoric but there was a lot at stake you know I felt like well Maybe we need to say something. I was in a place where I was... Uh, the biblical rhetoric, the biblical uh, books were influencing my poetry. And uh, I was with a Christian community, but I hadn't kind of confirmed. You know, I was, I was thinking of getting baptised, but I hadn't gone through that process to say, I am a Christian. But there was something in me that was saying, saying, say that you believe, you know? Say your God is one. But the, there was no kind of pressure, like either from within or from without, to, to go through and follow through and have that confirmed. So it didn't happen. And I started getting, as I saw this, the invasion of Iraq and things really escalating. When it came to the bombing of Afghanistan, I was back to that kind of um, blessed are the poor, kind of these kind of um, statements. And I thought, well, this is the richest country in the world bombing the poorest country in the world. They're after a man who goes about the Middle East on the back of a donkey. You know, is anybody missing the irony here? You know? Some, you know, something's wrong. <laughs> and so in terms of faith and belief and what I believed, then that was all kind of getting compounded into what was happening, you know? 
So, um, yeah, so as I started to look at, um, I was exposed to the Muslim world in, in that sense. Then it all kind of came to what were Muslims doing abroad and it became a, a, a kind of global Muslim issue. Um, so that made me look at uh, more, more kind of social situations. What was happening in America? This imam said this. Was he right? And that everything that was coming across sensational was just sensational. Um, and there was the, the moderation there. So really broad questions started to open up in my mind. Is like if I get baptised and I become a Christian, do I have to reject Muhammad, peace be upon him? Whereas if I become a Muslim, what is my perspective on things Christian? So these broad questions started kind of thinking, like, go that way, you know? Yeah. And I started having a kind of echo in my, my mind and my heart saying, you're a Muslim, you're a Muslim. This is a poem from before I said Shahada and I was with a Christian community and I was thinking to get baptised but then I started to consider Islam and I was caught between choices and it's called Six Billion Questions. If it all began with nothing, who could see yet? Nothing, something, what could be yet? Can it be true? Are we all one? Energy made us, what does it want done? Change in mind, what will be done? Mind in time with the clock on. Are we all in the one vision? Or all one in division? Wanna take it down, I wanna shake it up. I wanna take the break, choose what will I make? Wanna unify, I wanna beautify. Want those who dictate to be at stake. Wanna make amends, I want to make trouble. Take it all apart, play the part of a rebel. Take on devils at their own levels. Babylon tumbled, hell has got to crumble. I want to meet my maker, be it up to God or down to Mother Nature. Take me to the Creator, I've got six billion questions in mind. I want to meet my maker, be it up to God or down to Mother Nature. Take me to the Creator, cause I'm the six billionth question in mind. Should I believe in God or Allah? Koran, Bible, Bhagavad Gita, Jehovah or the Buddha, Voodoo. To Vishnu or the Krishna, Mantra, Tantra, Karma, Chakra, Amun, Ra, Ahura, Mazda. Am I gonna be a true believer? Am I to be true to what we are? From a demiurge to a demagogue, Tabernacle, Church, Dagger, Battle, Synagogue. How can the truth just be in words? Words if truth feel and if the truth hurts. From a demiurge to a demagogue. In studying graph design, Tabernacle, Church, uh, Dagger, Battle, you, Synagogue. You're looking at the meanings behind symbols and things, and you're reading about things like aesthetics and um, kind of things on a, on a idealistic level. And so beyond the kind of social and political, um, there was God, you know? I won't say religion, um, although, but religion was the kind of political embodiment of it. That was my own personal kind of awakening. But if you're not in with a group of people who have agreed at that level, you know, firstly to say, we believe in God, that kind of opens the door. Okay, then you're in a certain room. You know, okay, there might be disputes within the room, but at least you're in that room, you know? And so that's, that's what I was looking to do. I was looking to uh, kind of run with people who had opened this door and were in this kind of a room, you know? So that was my first calling to like a, a religion in a sense. Um, and I was be being exposed to certain aspects of the Islamic world, but in a, in a literal sense. I was reading about it in current affairs and things like this. Um, so uh, but it certainly then seemed to open up the potential that I'd never really considered, you know. Could I be a Muslim, you know? And um, that made me kind of think outside the box, in a sense. It made me think of 
Islam in England and um, is this an Arab thing? Is this is, in England? Is it a Pakistani thing? You know, the ethnicity of, of it kind of those issues kind of come into it. And um, but I was saying to myself, like, you're a Muslim. happened a few months later, I was walking around a market and I saw a guy selling calligraphy, calligraphic kind of uh, panels and things. And so the, the man um, at the stall, uh, he, he was a nice guy. Um, and we just started talking uh, and I was talking about calligraphy and things like this and then his um, his wife and children came across and it was just the, the mannerisms you know it was all it was very friend very friendly but you know quite active and lively and he basically said um, come and meet the people in my kind of community it was yeah it was very small though, it was a small group, uh, 10 people or so. And I basically was hanging around with them for three or four months. And it was all good, you know, it was all good. And yet, I hadn't actually said Shahada, but I was, yeah, I started to pray with them and try all these things. And it basically came to the new year, 2006. And, um, you know, what was a difficult time at that point was that was after the London bombings. So that was, you know, that brought up a lot of questions um, and the impact of that kind of a thing. Um, and so, but basically what it took was for this man to say, for Adnan to say, um, right, so you've been with us three months. When are you going to say Shahada? I was like, oh yeah, that, like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and I was like, you know, I was totally like, it was just making that last jump, which I'd wanted before, but now that it was there, was a, a bit more of a challenge. And, um, but everything was good. You know, I had to think like, well, what, what do I doubt? You know, and, um, you, you kind of walk with hope and fear in life and you just you see that the hope outweighs the fears and it, it kind of comes down to that that like you start thinking why not you know it almost becomes like that it's not why it's like why not that's what I found also compelling in Islam was that it was there was definitely instruction there and you followed it and then you see where it's going. You know, it's not just kind of take it at your own pace kind of thing. It's, you have to follow it and see where it's going. So, and that was all good. It was all fruitful, really fruitful. So, um, yeah, then I, I said you had it then in, in the new year. I'm Hafida, I'm 25, soon to be 26, and I'm, I'm married to Mohammed Amin. We've been married two years in December just gone. When li first living together, it's been a challenge on both parts that um, I've always lived with people and Mohammed has, for a lot of the time, lived just on, you know, on his own ways. And I grew up in a family with brothers and sisters and have to fight for my, <laughs> my bit. And, um, yeah, those the things that you get with families. And um, he was very much, well, before we met, it must have been a good year or so that he'd been living on his own. And so, um, in that way, it's kind of uh, fun. <laughs> but no, he's really good and uh, he's really, he's, 
although I'm the housewife as such, um, he's, he's always willing to help and he's always uh, good at getting his hands dirty. And uh, yeah, it's good fun. I first met my wife, and I don't know if she'll admit to this now, but it was basically I walked into a corner shop and just saw her walking up and down the walking up and down the aisles, choosing stuff. But I think what stood out for me now, if I think about it, was that um, she was walking around with a headscarf on, and I don't know. It was, but. There was something in her manner and her, her walk, and, and I just became intrigued, you know? And so what happened was they, they worked around the odds. I was just picking up a couple of things. So I ended up stood uh, behind her and her flatmate in the queue to the tilt, just thinking, say something, say something, say something. Or something. <laughs> and um, so, but they were talking amongst themselves, so it just kind of put it in on the conversation. But her, her flatmate was more talkative, so it didn't, it didn't really like, I didn't feel like I'd caught her attention, you know? So it came to it that uh, they, we basically said goodbye. And that was that. And I went home to my flatmate and said, you know when you feel you should have said something and you didn't and you just hope something comes, you know, comes about again that you get another opportunity. So, and that happened like um, basically, a, I think it was a few months later and coincidentally it was that very flatmate who was giving a talk and um, my wife Hafida, she attended it. Uh, she was a non-Muslim then. Um, but she was circulating around the community. And so she attended this talk and she was wearing a headscarf again. So I started with saying, um, hi, uh, do you <laughs> yeah, I, was <laughs> I was talking before I thought, you know, it was, do you remember me? <laughs> As if, you know. <laughs> He said to me, haven't we met before? And I said, oh gosh, you know, who's this? Who, who have I been, you know, me and my big mouth, I would just speak to anybody anywhere and, oh gosh, who, who is this? And the haven't we met before, oh dear, what have I got myself into? So I said, oh, where has he met this, where has he met this man, who is this guy? And he said, oh, the spa, the spa. I said, oh, the spa, <laughs> you know. Yes, I remember. So she just kind of went, oh, yeah, yeah, in a kind of vague way. And then my next question was, are you, were you a Muslim? <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> okay, and then I just struggled to make conversation after that, like, but I just, I think I kind of, yeah, pressed conversation. You know. And um, he's has his wonderful camera and his wonderful um, eye with the camera, um, which I picked up on and asked if he'd do some photography of the exhibitions that I'd been doing with my friends. So I quickly arranged that. And um, yeah, so our presence in the community started to increase then. So. Um, yeah, we basically, we were talking and it just got to the stage where I knew it could only be marriage, you know, it, it, could, it could only be marriage or else stop talking. In, in, you know, in a sense of like, I need to get married, do you want to get married, kind of thing. And uh, she said shahada um, while this was, you know, while we were talking. And it was funny because when she said jihada, some of the women in community said, I thought you were already a, a Muslim, you know, because she wore the headscarf and she'd actually done Ramadan before she said jihada. And so some people were surprised when she actually said jihada. So, um, 
yeah, we uh, confirmed that we were going to get married, so we made the necessary arrangements. And yeah, shortly after, we uh, Aziz was born. You know, not literally nine and a half months later, um, Aziz was born. So, and he's now coming up to seventeen months. So, uh, yeah, that's that's all been good. Yeah. I'm working here at uh, Cypher Design, I'm self-employed and uh, graphic design uh, business, typesetting for books, um, doing um, spray painting and uh, general graphic design and things. And uh, I worked at a sign company beforehand for just over a year, but I found that I couldn't get into the artwork. Uh, get right into the design work and then I basically went self-employed so that I could be I could work um, around my lifestyle that I've taken on since becoming a, a Muslim and um, being available to do the prayers at the certain times and the other advantage to being self-employed is that I can choose my clientele uh, in the sign company there was a lot of stuff that was for um, ca casinos and fa fast food places and uh, pubs and things and it was an industry I didn't have any interest in at all um, and uh, I'm generally not one to do something just for the sake of money that uh, goes against my principles so um, it's going out and fishing for the jobs and doing all that and trying to um, trying to balance that with learning and practicing Islam. My son, my son is growing up, he follows me in prayer sometimes. I never, I never initiated that, he just naturally took it on. Like, and he's only one and a half years old. Um, and um, my wife is learning more on Quran and picking up Arabic. Uh, and I've always been keen to learn Arabic and I've, I've done that in the past through um, tafsir classes we always look at the text and I've always like always loved picking up on Arabic the the insights that are there in the Quran and reading it and working off the Arabic and learning what the the meaning of the Arabic words are is uh, I've always loved etymology the the study of word origins in English so it's more, it's much more fascinating looking at it in Arabic, um, and um, then comes the uh, the prayer cycle, uh, which is essential to just leading a day that's connected to to what's going on around you, um, and the fact that the the prayer is prescribed, it's not something you do when you want to do it, um, it's something that has to be done there and then. And that was, that was something that was definitely different to my understanding when I was with the Christians of praying and asking for things and this kind of a pray when you feel the need. To pray because it was time to pray was a different thing. Um, it was, um, you were putting yourself in line with what was going on in the, in the natural environment.